Hi, welcome back to the 4 and 4 cooking channel. Today we're doing our second recipe from Belize, which is gonna be a Belize banana cake with cream cheese frosting. So to start, you're gonna need four bananas. Um, they should be pretty brown. I have three in this bowl, but I kept one out just so that you guys could see how brown the banana needs to be. It should be like, nasty brown banana that you're about to throw away because that's how they have the very best flavor. So all of these bananas are gonna go into this bowl and then you can use a fork or in my case a potato masher and mash all of the bananas together until they are nice and creamy. You might need to mix them around a little bit. My uncle cooks mashed potatoes like this and we call them strangled potatoes because he <laughs> whips them as hard as he can. Okay, once your bananas are all mashed, put um, one stick of butter, melted, mix it in there. You mix them around again. And you're gonna add in the rest of your wet ingredients. So I have two eggs that are beaten, one half cup granulated sugar, one half cup brown sugar. Two teaspoons of cinnamon. One teaspoon of vanilla. And one half cup buttermilk. So take your electric mixer and mix this all up. There we go. <laughs> Gotta plug it in. Now, I chose four bananas for this recipe. In normal American banana cake recipes, there's normally about three bananas, a little more flour. Um, they tend to be a little bit fluffier. In Belize banana cake recipes, all the ones that I found had like six bananas in them, and they tend to be very dense, very flat. Um, and so I wanted something in the middle. So I chose to go with two cups of flour um, and then four bananas to try to get a happy medium between a true Belizean recipe and then something um, that fits more American taste. So in this bowl separately, um, I have two cups of flour. I'm gonna do one teaspoon of baking powder <laughs> and one teaspoon of baking soda. And then an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna mix all of that up, combine it, and then we'll add this bowl into this bowl. And then all you have to do is mix the two together. So normally what I say is mix them slowly so that they're all combined together. And then once your ingredients are fully combined, mix for about a minute and a half more. And like I said, you wanna go for a full minute and a half probably. Make sure you get all the clumps out and make sure that everything is completely smooth. Once it's all mixed together, um, I'm going to grease this 9 by 13 pan with nonstick cooking spray. And then we're just going to dump the batter in here. Our oven is preheated to 350 degrees. We're going to cook it for about 30 minutes. And then after about 30 minutes or so, the top starts to brown, but the middle needs to cook more. So at that point, you're going to go in and put a piece of aluminum foil over the top and then um, cook it for probably about 20 more minutes. My oven takes a little bit longer than most, so I cook mine for about 30 minutes, but in a standard oven, it's probably about 20 minutes more. All right, we are all set to put this in the oven. And in the meantime, while we wait for that to cook, we're gonna make our cream cheese frosting. Okay, now we're gonna make the best part, uh, which is the cream cheese frosting. So this recipe um, I actually got from one of my very favorite blogs, Sally's Baking Addiction. She has a really great recipe for cream cheese frosting. And so normally that's always what I use on my cream cheese frosting recipes. So I have one block of softened cream cheese at room temperature and one stick of butter softened to room temperature. And what you're gonna do first is just use your electric mixer and combine them until they're creamy and fluffy. Now 
normally takes a couple minutes of mixing in order to get them to be creamy and fluffy. They normally start off not so. Okay, if you take a look at this now, you can really see the difference between what it looked like two minutes ago and what it looks like now. It's really um, definitely a lot fluffier than it was before. So that's how you know it's done. Now I'm gonna put in one teaspoon of vanilla, one eighth of a teaspoon of salt, and eventually we're gonna work our way up to three cups of powdered sugar, but we're gonna start off with one. I like to level it off using a spatula, just so that I know I'm getting a good, accurate reading of one cup. So put one cup in, we're gonna beat it for a little bit, we're gonna put the next cup in and beat it, and then the third cup in and beat it. All right, so I'm just gonna taste it. Yeah, that's ready to go on the cake. All right, so the timer just went off, so I'm going to check my banana cake. Like I said, about 30 minutes into the recipe, I covered it with some aluminum foil. Looks good, you can see it's risen. Testing it with this um, toothpick, it seems to come out clean. All right, looks like it's done. So I'm gonna take this out and leave it to cool on the stove. I'm gonna let it cool before I put the cream cheese frosting on it, just because if you put the cream cheese frosting on right away, it'll all kind of melt off and you don't really want that. So leave it to cool for maybe about 20 or 30 minutes, put the cream cheese frosting on and then enjoy. I feel like I've been waiting ages to ice this cake because I'm so excited, but finally the time has come. It is cool, the frosting is ready. Now we can tap this baby off. So obviously very easy. Just put the icing on the cake, spread it around, pile as much on there as you want. And then you get to enjoy it. All right, we got a nice good layer of frosting on here. And uh, I'm gonna cut a piece right now and try it. All right, scoop this out. I don't have a fork. really good you guys and I'm really really happy with the frosting and with the texture on the inside it's perfectly cooked not overdone and too tough and not underdone and watery so definitely had the right amount of cooking time on it and definitely a great recipe to try so if you all are really liking these videos and you want to see more of them then remember to just hit the subscribe button down there and then that way you can make sure not to miss anything else